Hello, Miss Bear. Hello, Brother Capel. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. How are you? I'm fine as a fiddle. Fantastic. That's stellar. Stellar dude. Stellar. What's today's date? Today's date is June 25th, 2018. Yeah. Cool. No, it's hot. It is very hot. <laughs> I know. I made a funny. You did make a funny. So we shall continue in uh, John, First John, the letter of 1 John. Chapter 2, starting at verse 18, all the way through verse 25. Oh, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to delve into the Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist spirit, mm-hmm. which is out there among the world... And not just the world only, but in uh, so-called Christianity, so-called any kind of Christianity, Catholicism, evangelical, also um, Islam and Judaism. The three great religions all have Antichrist spirit about them. I'm going to show you what that means Mm -hmm. and what it means for you, little children. Little children. Right? And that's how we know we're in the last... The That's last right. times, the last season, there will be no other seasons after this season, which has uh, lasted almost 2,000 years. So we're, we're going to just see how long it goes, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not a whole lot you can do about it. Nope. Right. Just endure. 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 All right. Shall we go from the reading, my friend? Yep. Okay. Go ahead and just read the whole kit and caboodle. Oh, okay. Doke. First John chapter 2, start with verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are they many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, changed the way my spouse and I conduct spiritual battle and has increased our alertness level to the tactics of Satan. This is an excellent training manual for building a stronger marriage by exposing the tactics your enemies use against you from all online digital retailers. God bless you all. So John, once again, you know, dressing the little children, he's dressing his uh, readers here, and he's basically saying you've heard, you know, that this uh, Antichrist is going to come, and even now the Antichrist is here, the Antichrist this Antichrist spirit. And then he uses plurals. So even now there's a lot of Antichrists out there and they came out from uh, from us mm-hmm. you know, in order to be manifest. So it's kind of easy to go out there and see the world or see, you know, atheistic thought as Antichrist. You mm-hmm. know, that's pretty easy to uh, see that. You should be able to see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little harder for most people to see that it's right in uh, Christianity itself. Right. And it's and I'm not talking pseudo Christ. I'm not talking just something or someone or an organization pretending to be Christ. I'm talking they actually are Christ haters. Mm-hmm. Um and under that pretense they hate Messiah. They're they're against Christ. And this is how John uses that word. He doesn't use it pseudo. It's anti Christ. It's against Christ. I would like to use the term Messiah hater. Mm-hmm. And even if that entails being phony and pretending that you're a Messiah lover, you know, in a in a Christian environment, you're really a Messiah hater. Right. You hate Messiah. Because your actions. Yeah. And it's easy to see that in the world. Not so not so much easy to see 
you know, in inside. No. So I'm going to start off with, and Miss Kapow doesn't, she doesn't know this list here that I compiled. So she's going to freak out. And uh, this is going to be cool because I love to hear her freak out. <laughs> but I'm going to compile, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a, a list or just read a list to you. And, um, and then we're going to go and we're going to see how these people are Messiah haters because they're also pretending that they're Messiah followers, right? Or they use the term that they're Messiah followers or Christian, but you'll see that they can't be Christian because they deny the Christ. They deny the real Messiah. And of course they deny all his commands and his, um, statutes and laws, right? Mm -hmm. And they have to deny that this Messiah, the one, the one that they worship, their Christ is not one with the father. See, because if you deny the father, you deny the son. If you deny the son, you deny the father. And we're, I'm going to show you how they deny the father because they've made up a new Christ, a new warm and friendly Christ, a Cheez-Its, right? Mm -hmm. And so someone will say, oh, they're Christians, but they're antichrist. Do you understand my drift? Yeah. And why they deny the father is because like in the Old Testament, the Old Testament, well, that God is mean, right? That God, that God destroyed Sodom, right? That God came out and said, uh, no man shall lie with another man. Correct. Right. right. That's the mean God. So mm -hmm. you got to deny that God. And then you get to, to the nice Jesus one, right? Mm -hmm. The one that just peace, teaches peace and love for everybody and tolerance. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not, that's not our Messiah. Nope. See, that's a made up cheez -Its. And it's, it's not okay that they just embrace this made up Jesus as a false teacher or a false che Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's anti, it's antichrist. I hope you understand that. Yeah. So let me read this list to you. You're going to like this, Ms. Okay. You're going to like it in the sense that you're going to hate it. Uh, I, <laughs> I, had, uh, I had read an article uh, today about uh, LBGT, a study that was done. Mm -hmm. And I forget what the percentage is. I tried to post it on Facebook, but it, it, the picture wouldn't come through. And I, I hate posting stuff without a picture. So I didn't post it. And I, now I don't remember where the study was done from, but it was a recent study. And it was a large percentage of LGBTQIABC to Z uh, <laughs> that claim they're Christian. And uh, it even, it even shocked the people who did the study. So this prompted me to type in a simple search LGBT Christians. And one of the links I got was to Amazon, Amazon books. So this is just the first page. I'm not even clicking on the next page. This is just the first page that comes up. And I'm only going to read the titles. I'm not going to go deeper into the books. The first book is called Our Witness, The Unheard Stories of LGBT plus Christians. What does that tell you? There are Christians who are LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, plus means queer, non-binary, you mm -hmm. know, it's whatever, right? So the first book only has four reviews, but it has four stars, four solid stars. And um, it's clearly combining Christianity with LGBT, is it not? Mm-hmm. That's Antichrist. That's not Messiah. It's not just a pseudo Messiah. It's not a false prophet or a false teacher teaching your Bible, although that they are doing that. It's actually Antichrist. They came out from among us. You understand that? That's right. These people didn't come out from Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. They came out from your church. Mm -hmm. They came out from us, Christianity. That's the whole point I'm trying to get to. Mm-hmm. The second book is called Unclobber. Unclobber? Unclobber. Rethinking our misuse of the Bible on homosexuality. Wow. It has 110 reviews, five stars. No kidding. Yes. Huh. And it, it, it makes you wonder where are the where are the biblical Christians that are not reviewing this book going, wait a minute, this is not scriptural. How can 100, 110 people think this is the best thing since sliced pie and give it five stars? Mm -hmm. Clearly by the title, you can tell it's pro-homosexual uh, and, and Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Number three, transforming. 
the Bible and the lives of transgender Christians. The Bible and the lives of transgender Christians. It didn't say the Bible and transgenderism. It says transgender Christians. It's saying that you could be a Christian, a Christ follower, and a transgender. That's what it's saying. Mm. Folks, there's 17 reviews on it, all five star. Wow. Where are the people saying this is not right? See, they're not out there. They're not. The, the people fighting for the gospel of Christ don't exist anymore. They're gone. They're gone. The, the, the generation that's up here, the millennials, the generation Z, in this study I was reading, they're primarily atheist. They're, they're primarily atheist and they're very, very accepting of LGBT and all the everything that comes with it. Mm. Now, is it because they're just born retarded? No, it's because of our education system. They've been trained that way since they're little. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're not seeing, you know, the people who read books or, or who write in reviews, those kind of people that have an online presence, you're not seeing them fighting for the gospel, fighting for truth because... Antichrist is here. The spirit of Antichrist is, has spread over the last 1900 years. And it didn't just like go out. It's increased. Right. That's true. It's increased, increased. We, we've been in the last times, in the last hour for the last 1900 years. It, it just keeps filling up the cup of iniquity. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know when it's going to end. You know, I, the it's Bible big. says no flesh will be, you know, there'll, there'll be, if it wasn't for the elect's sake, it's shorten the days. I'm sorry, you're going to say something? I was just going to say it's a big cup. A deep yeah, it's cup. a big cup, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, but the very fact that if it wasn't for the elect's sake, you know, he's going to shorten the days. That means that if if he didn't, there was, there'd be no elect. The, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. You, you, it's, it's really hard to survive this. Mm-hmm. Um, be, because no one's going to listen to you. No one's listening to me. Really? Nope. I know that. No one's really listening to me. I, I understand that. Um, it, it, and I'm, I'm not, I can't change any of this stuff. Uh, the next book is called Torn. Rescuing the Gospel from the Gays versus Christians Debate. Folks, rescuing the gospel from the gays versus Christian debate. Mm-mm. We don't need to debate Christians and gays. It's 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 one. This book has four hundred and sixty seven reviews, and they're all four and three quarter star, almost total five star. Wow. Uh, the next thing is not a book. Uh, it's a t shirt. It's a black t shirt with uh, white lettering, and it says Jesus loves LGBTQ, and that's in rainbow. That's a uh, Jesus loves LGBTQ Christian LGBT support gay rights T-shirt that only has one review, but it's five star. <clears throat> Here's a book called Sanctified an an anthology of poetry by LGBT Christians. Hmm. LGBT Christians. It has four reviews, all five star. This particular book, I took a picture of maybe two years ago at the uh, Barnes and Noble bookstore. And I had posted this on our Facebook page when I saw it. And it was in the uh, Christianity section. So I, I picked this one up myself and, and um, actually handled it and read the, uh, you know, the foreword and, you know, covers and things like that. This is called God and the Gay Christian the biblical case in support of same-sex relationships. Mm. 482 reviewers, four and three-quarter star. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm getting disgusted just reading this. You know what I mean? It certainly is grieving. Isn't it? I'm really starting to get kind of ticked mm. off here in my spirit. I can feel it. Mm-hmm. Can can you be gay and Christian responding with love and truth to questions about homosexuality? 165 reviewers, uh, four and three quarter star. Uh, Oh, here's one. Gay and Christian. No contradiction. No contradiction. One one review, five star. 
Uh, how about this one? Rescuing Jesus. Rescuing Jesus. Mm-hmm. How people of color, women, and queer Christians are reclaiming evangelicalism. Mm-hmm. 31 reviewers, four and three quarter star. Here's another t-shirt. It's a black t-shirt. It says Jesus. There's a there's a, a drawing of a Jesus figure, all in rainbow. Underneath it says love everyone, loves everyone. And this is from Christians supporting LGBT gay rights. Jesus loves everyone t-shirt. Here's one called changing our mind. Definitive third edition of the landmark call for inclusion of LGBTQ Christians with response to critics. Five star reviews. Um, and the last one, this is just page one, folks. I it. There's 20, there's 20 pages to this, by the way. This is just page one, and I'm stopping. The last one on page one is gay on God's campus, mobilizing for LGBT equality at Christian colleges and university. All right. Wow. You get my point? Mm-hmm. So now let's see what the word of God says. If anybody gives a rat's butt <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a whole lot of people that give a rat's what what the Bible says, but Miss Capow and I still kind of do, right? Uh, yeah, Th- that's why we that's not why just kind of, ta- but we do. We do. Yeah, that's why we talk about it. Yeah, I didn't mean like we kind of. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm being facetious. We 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 still do. I'm getting bad. <laughs> I am. This really irritates the heck out of me. I cannot tell you how this irritates me. <laughs> where were we John, uh, John I lost my place we we're, were right, right at the first um, Johnny um, 218 first huh. John 218 I don't know why I'm in uh, first John 3 1 through 2 that's where I'm at <laughs> that's where that's where my Bible software took me for no reason whatsoever it just took me there and now I can't find my way back huh Interesting. You better talk a little bit here while I try okay. to find myself. Well, um, first John two 18, we're talking about the last time, the last time, the last hour. So as little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the antichrist, which brother Paul said is those that are against Christ, Christ haters shall come. Even now are they many antichrists? whereby we know that it is the last hour. And the scripture that I have for um, this verse is in Jude 18, where it says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit. And as we look at um, mockers, we also know that um, in the epistle of Peter, he was talking about in the last days, there would be mockers. So we would see that in the last days, obviously the ungodly would increase and the godly would decrease. As you already know, we have a very small voice, if not any. And that's why you, you, when you, um, when you Google or you read, um, these book um, reviews, you know, there doesn't seem to be much of a voice for Christians because they've, I believe they've just been silenced because the majority always gets to speak louder than mm-hmm. the um, unmajority. So, and, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, how I always like to go to the Old Testament. Um, in Deuteronomy 13, 12 through 15, it says, if thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to dwell there, saying, certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you. It's the same thing that um, the Apostle John writes, that these certain men come from 
among us and have writ withdrawn the inhabitants of their city saying let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently and behold if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you thou shalt surely smite those inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword destroying it utterly and all that is therein and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. So you got to get rid of those kind of people because they're like a cancer within the group. Yeah, and they, they should have been, mm-hmm. but they haven't. And that's why we're in a position that we're in now. Exactly, exactly. Because um, globally, not just America, but globally, we've lost all morality mm-hmm. and moral compass. And that's because the, the leadership not being the true uh, watchman and they um, they have gone the way of Cain and... and and where they have um, been inclusive. Yeah. You know, they don't want to be harsh. They don't want to draw the line. They don't want to excommunicate, but they want to be in- inclusive. It's just that that whole, uh, the new word now is the collective. You mm-hmm. know, everybody is one and the same because everyone has their own journey to Christ. And so we have to be tolerant of where people are at. And that's not true. No. That's and, not biblical. And one of the things I, I came across too when I was looking at this this study that came out and it was really interesting because the study had confirmed a lot of things that we already know of as far as health issues with uh, that kind of lifestyle and drinking and, you know, drug abuse, you know, all kinds of stuff. But what, one of the things that I come across too is there was a lot of articles based off this study for youth pastors, <laughs> youth pastors, you know, in churches who, who try to reach the, the new generation, generation Z or millennials is, um, is, is there, they're showing that there's a large percentage of millennials that are accepting, very accepting of, of, of LGBTQ a through Z. And not only that, but they consider themselves atheist and also themselves, um, not, totally um, heterosexual, right? Mm -hmm. So the challenge is, is for these youth pastors and stuff, how do we get the young kids in the church, but yet still deal with their, um, you know, respect (laughs) generation Z's, you know, thought processes, Mm -hmm. right? And, And the whole reason why you would have books like that or conferences or worried about something like that is because you're not telling them the truth. Right. Because if you tell them the truth and they all said, screw you, you're just an intolerant, you know, sad old man, then you'd be in the position of the Kapow radio show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be worried about your salary and making money and having a building or anything. You'd be in our position and they just wouldn't listen to you. Right. Mm -hmm. But on that day, on that day, right, when the sheep are separated from the goats, um, I wouldn't want to be the other guy. Right. That's that's the whole that's the whole plan here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't do any of this stuff for here. Right. And we're ta- <laughs> you know we're talking about people that are professing Christianity. You know, because the world, you know, they're lost with without Christ anyway. Yeah. You know, so we're not talking about those people because those people, if they repent, you know, they become Christ followers and they're new creatures, and we accept them. Mm -hmm. But it's the ones that say they're Christian, but they are um, anti God's word and they change it and they make truth relevant to whatever, you know, is is truth to them. Because even Paul said, don't you know that a little leaven leavens everything? Yeah. You know, and he even said that um, in the in the Corinthian church that when they he said, "You, you need to judge within the group. You know, to keep it healthy, right? Yeah. He goes, he says he's not telling you not to, um, let me read it here. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 9 says, I wrote unto you in the epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortionaries or the idolaters, for then you must needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an adulterer or whatever, or a drunkard or extortioner. With such, not do not even eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? 
do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without, God judges. Mm -hmm. So outside the church, unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Therefore, put away from you, from among yourselves, that wicked person. Those people that confess Christianity, but they're not walking the walk. Mm -hmm. They're they're among you. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, that's what the scriptures say. That's not something uh, Ms. Capel's making up. No. That's that's what the word of God says. And so if, if you listen to what God says, you wouldn't have uh, those books up there. <laughs> that's right. Having such high reviews either. Because mm-hmm. you'd have, it, you know what I mean? That's right. You wouldn't even have books like that. They wouldn't even, there wouldn't even be an audience for that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, gay and Christian, you know, no controversy or whatever the title was, right? No That's problems. Right. You wouldn't even have something like that because you would have been ran out of the the Christian community a long time ago. Yeah, but we live we live in the era we live in the era of the Antichrist, and it's just like Paul says in Second Thessalonians. People have set themselves up in the temple of God. That's their own spirit, their own body, the temple of God. They've set themselves up as a God and they worship themselves as a God and they sit as a God Mm -hmm. in their own temple. They are antichrist, you know, and, um, you know, I know a lot of people are looking for the guy who's going to bring all evil and they're not looking around them at the people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The the man of sin is already here, folks. The man of lawlessness is already here. It's all around you. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely despicable. Um, yeah, because it's all about the apostasy. It is. You were once a Christian, and then you turned from God's truth, mm-hmm. and now you're apostate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you expect the world to do it. That's not. It's not. That's not a big thing. Mm-mm. They're pagan. You expect that, but it's from within, mm-hmm. and then that's the sign that you are in the last the last hours. Like I said, it's been going on for 1900 years, but there's no age after this. Mm-mm. You know. Um. This is like the climax of the story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So, verse 18. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm still there. Okay. Because I lost my place. It disappeared. Like we had talked about earlier. You hit a button and it just goes away. Little children, it is the last time. um, The Greek is hour, the last hour. It's last is like the last of the season, the last one, the end of the line. It's the last time, the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, he doesn't use plural, it's singular. Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, plural, whereby we know that it is the last time. How do you know it's the last hour of the last age? By the many Antichrists that came. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how you know. He just said that. So the last, the last time here, it's, The last time is we're in that era since Messiah came, true Messiah came. Mm -hmm. See, there were no Messiah haters prior to Yeshua. You understand that? Before Jesus came, there was no anti-Christ because there was no Christ. That's right. There was no anti-Messiah because he wasn't here yet. Right? Prior to Yeshua, who claimed that he and the Father were one, right? Mm -hmm. And even John wrote that. From the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the the Word was God. He claimed that's what that's what pissed off the Jews was blasphemy that he equated himself with the father. So before he came and did that, there was no Messiah hate. So Messiah hate was a new phenomenon after Jesus Christ. It was new. And that indicated that you were in that last age. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the, the audience that John's writing to. They had previously heard that Messiah hate would come. They've been taught that. They're saying it's going to come. Even Jesus said that, you know, the last there's going to be many people coming to my name and you know, prophesy, doing all kinds of teaching. And, you know, he knew that. And so they knew that Messiah hate would come with their newfound saving knowledge of God and his son. And a lot of it came from the Jewish church. The Jews themselves hated Messiah. Exactly. And today, unless you're a Messianic Jew, which I don't like that term because you're either a, a Yeshua follower or you're not, you know, these, these stupid labels, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if, if you're Jewish, 
Orthodox Jew, you know, um, ascetic Jew, whatever, you're a Messiah hater. You know, and you're not doing the law of Moses either. That that was that was destroyed in 8070. It's impossible to do that. Exactly. So they're, they're doing something totally different. So, uh, you know, they, they knew that the last days were upon them when they witnessed this Messiah hate. You know, the church was being persecuted for their belief in Christ. And then some of them that were among them went out. Mm-hmm. And they had to go out in order to be revealed, to, to manifest not only themselves, but to manifest what was true. Mm-hmm. So, you know, John declares that there were now many Messiah haters. And because of that, they, they knew for sure that they had entered this, this last time. That's right. right? Mm-hmm. And let's see if um, anything else on that. Not for me. Not from you. No. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's see here. I might have a few other things. Uh, I want to talk about that connection, you know, because we just kind of came in that first verse here. Mm-hmm. We talk about the signs of the last time, but there's a there's a connection with First John two fifteen and seventeen that we read last week, and that connection is love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And if any man love the world, the world and the Father. The love of the Father is not in him. Mm-hmm. That has everything to do with the Antichrist coming out from the church. That's right. That's why I was able to read those book titles to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because those people love the world. And everybody that reviewed those books and gave it five stars loved the world. The love of the Father is not in them. They're mm-hmm. not of you, folks. And that's why the world hears them. Yes. Yes, and they sell books and they're successful because they're of the world. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. And it's tied in it's tied into what he just said. Then he talks about the Antichrist, people that are Messiah haters. They pretend like oh, we're Christian, but they hate Messiah. There are coming those seducers who are of the world. And John talks about that later on in four five. Mm-hmm. He says, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them. That's mm-hmm. what just Miss Kapow just said. Yep. You just said that. I did. You did. You, oh, it's almost like you read the word of God. So, so this is when we're talking about Antichrist, it's tied into the world and it's tied into those that come out from Christianity. How do you think they wrote those books? Why would somebody write a book? Yeah. God and the gay Christian. Why would someone write that book if they didn't have any foundation in Christianity at first? Mm -hmm. They came out from you. And so he says, they're coming those seducers who are of the world and would tempt you to go out from us. John says that in Mm 2.19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not, no doubt, have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. That's right. They would tempt us to go from Christ and deny Christ. Mm-hmm. That's where that uh, scripture in Deuteronomy came in. Yeah. That certain men, the children of Belial, that are gone out from among you. Yes. Yeah. So there's these Antichrist people, they're children of Belial, they're sons of Satan. They oppose Christ. Even if they say like the Pope, well, I'm the vicar of Christ. Mm. I'm I'm God's representative on earth. He uh, he opposes the Messiah. Mm-hmm. You can't be in fellowship with the Pope or any of his like yep. in your Christianity. Because that Antichrist, not just the Pope, but all the Antichrist that came out from among the church, denies the Son. Yep. And first John three ten says, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever does not righteousness is not from God, not of God, and neither that he that does not love his brother. Yes. Yes, and we explain who is your brother. Mm-hmm. Is it the LGBT people? No. They're not Mm-mm. your brothers and sisters, folks. Those they want that do the will of God. Yeah. They want you to think you are because they, they, they want to twist the scriptures to do, oh, I got to love everybody. That's why they have the t-shirt. Jesus loves uh, queer people or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not like that. 
And that's why they worship love, mm-hmm. the, the love of the, the definition that the world has. Yeah. Instead of God, who God is love, not love is God. Yeah. Yes. And so they sit as, as God in their little temple, where is where originally, you know, uh, God became man mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ. Right? That's right. But they flip it out and now man has become God. Especially this generation, this generation Z, the millennials, the, 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 the selfie <laughs> generation, right? That's right. They're so narcissistic. I'm not talking about all of them, but, you know, in, in, a, in a whole. Uh, they, they're raised on this technology and they're just, they, they're, it's all about them. It's uh, it, setting up as God. So the Antichrist, it's, it's an adversary of Christ. Claiming themselves, that Antichrist, that person that has that Antichrist in them, they claim themselves um, that what belongs to Christ, they put on themselves. And they substitute themselves for Christ as a supreme object of worship. Is that true? Hmm. They deny the Son. Mm-hmm. They deny the Son. In uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.4. Paul says, who opposeth? He's talking about the, the man of sin, right? Mm-hmm. That's going to come. The apostasy that Ms. Kapow mentioned in the mm-hmm. last days. Mm-hmm. What's apostasy? The falling away. It's it's associated with that. The falling away. Paul's not talking about the world. He's talking about the, 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 the church. Yeah. They fall away. And he's talking about that man of lawlessness who rises, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. That's right. Or that is worshiped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's that's the LGBT guy who who who's sitting there going, I can be a Christian and be God because I've I've risen above all of that. Right. I make my own rules. Mm-hmm. It, it's really it really is that simple. He opposes himself. He's anti all that is called God. So if, if you're writing a book or reading a book or reviewing a book or, or in the LGBT Christian community, you're opposed to all that is called God. Mm-hmm. Why? Because LGBT is so bad? It's all sin. That's right. All sin. You can replace LGBT with murder or pedophilia or, you know, theft, I, whatever you want to do. But it's whatever sin, whatever's anti-law of God. Yep. And they replace, like I said before, that, that, that great truth that God is man, that Jesus became man, God, and they substitute it for man as God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's because they don't understand the scripture, why it was important for Christ to become man. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Verse 19. You know, we can actually end the show right there. I mean, that was like, that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. In verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's right. You know? And he that hath the Son hath life, and he that does not have the Son hath not life. Mm -hmm. They were not of them in a spiritual way nature they weren't in communion and we talked about the last couple of weeks about what makes communion and what um you know uh constitutes having fellowship with god right right that's what's the important thing so these uh these antichrists they come from the early church they were not of them right and because of that it was proof that they weren't of them because they didn't continue in -hmm. the doctrines that's right. So Messiah haters, they go out, right? And mm-hmm. because they do that, then they're revealed. Mm-hmm. Well, just like in the New Testament, when the Lord Jesus was talking about his flesh, those that uh, his followers must eat his flesh and drink his blood, how many of his disciples, those that were following him, his teaching, mm-hmm. said, oh, this is way too hard yeah. to understand. The word was not in them and they fell away. Yeah. Yeah, it's just too much. Mm-hmm. We can't deal with this. You know, and like uh, when we learned about Oprah, when she learned that God was a jealous God, she goes, well, the God, I don't believe that that's a good attribute for God to have. Even the word of God says it, mm-hmm. but it was, it didn't fit her. 
Mm-mm. image of who God is. And so she fell by the wayside and she still thinks of herself as Christian. Yeah. And the thing is, is by, by saying that, well, I, I just, I can't see God as a jealous God. Or we heard her the other day tell um, someone that uh, she believed God uh, loves gays, accepts, accepts everybody. Mm-hmm. When this one lady was trying to tell her about um, that sodomy was, was wrong. That's right. Uh, it, it, when she said that, I mean, it's just like Ms. Kapow reiterated when she says, hey, you know, I know more than the law of God. I believe this. I believe. She herself sets herself up as a God. That's right. In where? At the temple of God. Mm-hmm. In Jerusalem? No, in her heart. Yep. And does she oppose everything that's God? Yes. The man of lawlessness, the man of sin is us. It's the people that go out from among Christians, the apostates. The word antichrist is only used here by John. No other New Testament writer ever uses it. That's right. That's the right. book of Reve- even when he wrote the book of Revelation or dictated it, it was the beast. Mm-hmm. It's never the antichrist. So anyway, this whole weird prophetic doctrine has <laughs> emerged mm-hmm. um, that's very confusing for most people. But it, in its simple form, it's us, folks. It's the apostasy. It's saying, you know, you're in the last days. Yeah. It's a great sign. In fact, if you if you do a word search on Antichrist and Antichrists, mm-hmm. it's only it's only found four times, and it's just in the first book, First um, John and Second John. That's it. That's it. Yeah, and I discovered that years ago mm-hmm. when trying to do a study on Antichrist, and then I realized, wow, everything I've been taught was not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, and I I thought it was true until I was asked to research. Um, you know, the, the Antichrist coming, and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's made up, you know, as far as that, that one particular beast. But hey, you know, people believe whatever they want. Uh, you know, it's not a matter of salvation for the most part, but you, you can get distracted, and then you're not focused on this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Them coming out from among you, or you coming out from among us. All right? Mm-hmm. So, let's see, verse 20... But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And John fourteen twenty five says, The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then 1 Corinthians two sixteen says that we have the mind of Christ. So believers, real believers, have a supernatural anointing mm-hmm. on them from the Spirit of God. You know the truth. In verse 21, John says, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. That's right. And Titus 1, 2 says, God cannot lie. And so all his promises are true, steadfast. And that's why God is our anchor. And um, his word is sure. And you can rely on his promises. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the Holy Spirit, it, it confirms in your soul, in your very spirit, what is true. You mm-hmm. know. You know. You have that measure of spirit. And, and you know it. And you know the truth. And you know that truth concerning the Son and the Father. Just like in 1 John 2.13, he wrote, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. And you young men, because you've overcome the wicked one, right? And on and on. So you're able to detect a lie as a thing opposed to the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the spirit of Christ in you, the real spirit of Messiah in you, you should be able to look at those book titles and just right away, bam, you know that's wrong. That's right. Not because, you know, your father taught you or that's what you learned in school it's because you know what's right. You know the truth. Mm-hmm. You know what's antichrist. Because the spirit of truth will lead you into all truth. The spirit will. You don't need Brother Kapow and Sister Kapow. We're just here confirming it mm-hmm. to those who know it. We're talking to the remnant. That's what we are. We're talking to the remnant. We're not trying to convince people who are not the remnant. They're not yeah. going to get it. 
right? It's because right. the remnant, they know it. And because no lie is of the truth. Every lie is excluded from being the truth. That's why John wrote that epistle. That's right. To point out what the lie is and who the liars are. And he tells us in the next verse. Mm-hmm. Oh, and even Jesus, when he was talking to his disciples, he said, for the prince of this world cometh and he had nothing in me. Mm-mm. Nothing in Christ. Mm-mm. Nothing. And who's the prince of the world? Satan. Yeah. And he's the liar and the father of all liars. Mm-hmm. So in verse 22, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Messiah. Who's a liar unless you deny he's the Messiah? He so, is the Antichrist that the, denies the Father and the Son. Yes, he's the anti. He is Antichrist mm-hmm. who denies the Father and Son. So, who's a liar? He's guilty of the lie just mentioned, right? They don't know the truth mm-hmm. that Jesus Christ, the grand central truth. Yep. So I, I made a little note here about uh, the three great religions. The lies of the three great religions. Hmm. Okay. And all three great religions deny the son. And when you deny the son, you deny the father, then you are a Messiah hater or an antichrist. That's right. So if you, you deny the son in verse 23, we'll get to that. But if you deny the son, you can't, you can't know the real father, you know? Well, mm-hmm. let, let's read verse 23. Whosoever denieth the son, the same hath not the father. But he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. You, 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 you can't separate, you know, the warm and fuzzy Jesus from the God of the Old Testament or vice versa. Mm-hmm. You can't get rid of the Messiah and say, well, we still worship, you know, uh, Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Deny the Son, you can't know the real Father. All right. It's just like I said before, in the beginning was the Logos, the Word of God. The Logos was God. The Word was with God. Jesus and the Father are one. God made flesh. Jesus, um, the Jews had hated Jesus for equating himself with the Father, right? I and the Father are one, etc. So the first main religion that's Antichrist is Judaism. Judaism. Mm-hmm. So it, Christians that are involved with, with Israel and you know, the Zionism and the last days and Jerusalem and all that stuff. And because, the Jew, you know, the Judaism there, they deny Messiah. They hate Jesus. Mm-hmm. They hate him. They hate that he claimed that he was the Messiah. They're still waiting for their Messiah. Yep. They're Messiah haters. And because of that, they don't know the Father. And I've got to tell you some bad news, folks. Judaism in all its forms, all its forms is antichrist. They're not your brothers and sisters. It's antichrist. Islam. Islam says Allah has no son and Muhammad is his prophet. Do they deny Jesus as the son of Messiah? Yeah. You know, how many people say, well, Allah and Yahweh are the same. All oh, roads no. lead the same, right? Mm-hmm, They're the yeah. same God. But they denied, they said Allah has no son. So they deny the son and Messiah. Do they not know the father either? They replace Messiah with a prophet. What are they? They're antichrist. Well, it's a lot easier to see that than it is Judaism, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And how about Christianity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christianity. I'm talking about Catholic and anything that's not biblical Christianity. That's right denies Jesus as Messiah because they replace the work with the queen of heaven, Catholicism. Yeah. yeah. It's mother Mary, the queen of heaven. She is, she has preeminence over Jesus. You know that. Yep. That's why they pray to Mary. The Pope claims he's the Messiah on earth. (laughs) He's, he's opposed to the real Messiah. Mm -hmm. How about their crucifix? It mocks Messiah. He's always, he's always hanging in a position of death, helpless. They're antichrist, right? Mm-hmm. And the other thing I want to bring up is like uh, modern day uh, entertainment, TV, anything, uh, movies or anything. You can't watch anything without hearing uh, the words Jesus Christ used mm-hmm. as a curse word, uh, either in anger, hatred, disgust, right? 
Yep. How many times you hear that? Jesus Christ, Jim, get it together. Right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Over and over again. It's always used in like an anger or disgust or hatred. It's never used, you know, happily, is it? Mm -mm. So what does this do? It minimizes Messiah, right? And the word Jesus is Messiah, doesn't it not? Mm -hmm. That's How come they don't say, oh, featherly Buddha? Mm -hmm. Oh, for the love of Muhammad's mother. How come they don't say that? It's always Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's not like they're calling him in prayer either. <laughs> no, you know? no, it's always in hatred. It's a, it's like a curse. It's a cuss word, mm -hmm. right? It's, a, it's cussing. And that's conditioned people to be Messiah haters. It's, it's, it minimizes who Jesus Christ is. Yeshua HaMashiach, it minimizes him the whole time. And you just grew up hearing it so much. Mm -hmm. Maybe even saying it. That's right. And even Jesus told us that the that the the devil is uh, he claimed he said he accused them actually told them that he is your father and the lust of the father you will do and he was a murderer from the beginning and he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him and when he speaks a lie he speaks of his own for he's a liar and the father of it and Second Peter two talks about the false prophets that are among the people. Even there shall be false teachers among you who privily, which means secretly, shall bring a in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon them swift destruction. First Jude one four says, For there are certain men that crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. And then um then whoever denies the Son, in verse 23, Titus 1.16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. And Second John 1.9 says, Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God, and that he abides in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Amen. And that, <laughs> that says it all. Mm -hmm. Scripture after scripture after scripture. It breaks it down. You know who's who, who's what's what, who's Antichrist, who's not. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing where he says you'll know them by their fruit. If they don't walk in love and in truth, they're not of God. Mm -mm. That's true. In verse 24, it says, let that therefore... Abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. Um, let me stop there. Let what abide in you? That truth. Mm -hmm. That truth respecting the Father and the Son. Let that truth respecting the Father and Son abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. That's the doctrine. It's a seed. It's not merely dropped in, but it's taken root. Right? Mm -hmm. First John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. They're not LGBT people. That's right. They're not murderers. They're not pedophiles. They're not lusters of the flesh. They're not covetous. They're not stealers. They're not jealous or envious, are they? Mm -mm. All the Galatian 5 stuff. They don't commit sin. Why not? For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. They're not antichrist. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Right? Mm -hmm. It will remain in you. That stuff you've heard, the doctor, the doctrines you're hearing now, if it'll remain in you, you're going to abide. It'll continue. You know, you're going to be, you'll be okay in the end of the day. Verse 25, the last verse. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. And then we go back to when we first started this whole series, talking about eternal life versus immortality. Mm -hmm. 
It's a promise for us. If we remain and abide, we don't become anti-Christ. We don't become Messiah haters, right? That's right. But if we don't abide and remain, we don't remind, abide in that doctrine of father and son, then we could easily become anti-Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the promise, eternal life shall be the permanent consummation of this, abiding in the Son and in the Father. That's right. First John 2, 24. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Mm-hmm. And it was promised to us. That's right. Okay. And then because, and then he's going to go on, and we'll talk about this next week, because there's there's going to be people out there. That's why John laid all this stuff out to you. And he talked about the Antichrist, and he talked about the Antichrist spirit and denying the Father, because he says, I wrote those things to you concerning them that seduce you. Hmm. Concerning them that seduce you. Let me give you an example of that. Book title one, Our Witness, The Unheard Stories of LGBT and Christians. Unclobber, Rethinking Our Misuse of the Bible on Homosexuality. Transforming the Bible in the Lives of Transgender Christians. Mm. Rescuing the Gospel from the Gays versus Christians debate. You get my point here? Mm -hmm. Concerning those that seduce you. Yeah. Okay. You got anything else, Ms. Kamal? Well, I just wanted to end with this scripture okay, in uh, John 1, 12 that says, But as many as received him, to them he gave he power, or exousia, the authority, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Oh, amen. Thank you. I think that's going to conclude it. You got mm-hmm. anything else? No, that's it. I think that's it. That's pretty heavy. I just want to say I'm going to end with a song called All That's Left Now. Oh, I and like that. a brand new song from Mesquite Cafe. Uh, as the, the time you're hearing this particular broadcast, it's available on iTunes. It's not yet available on Amazon or Spotify and those other ones yet. In about a week, it will be. But you can't get it on iTunes. You can't even hear it on YouTube yet. It's not available yet. About a week or so. Brand new. And it is um, it is about the end of everything. It's about a great mountain of fire hitting everything and it's over. All right? Mm-hmm. So listen closely to the words. Um, I think it's a powerful tune. Yep, it is. And, um, you know, just ponder it. All right? All right. So with that. Ciao, babies.